November 2023. And in the Great Central Railway's Rothley Carriage Works, a most unusual vehicle. Simultaneously, well ahead of its time, but a century out of date. So we've got the diesel engine, which is powering the alternator. That then powers the traction motors and gives us the drive. It's home today to driver Scott, second man Steve, and their guard, Gareth. Leaving the sidings, it's time to accelerate. Scott requests more power, and the engine revs up. As we approach line speed, you can really hear the difference in the work the engine is doing. Nowadays, of course, most trains have a cab at both ends, making quick work of a terminus turnaround. But this auto car, number 3170, and its sister, number 3171, date from 1903. They were truly setting the template for things to come. First stop of the day is Leicester North Station. There's a brief flurry of activity while the crew change ends and passengers board, and we're off again. By the time we reach the double track section of the Great Central Railway, the 52 reversible seats in the passenger saloon are all full. I think it's hard to understate what a shock this must have been to the passengers of the early 1900s, because there had been auto trains before, but they were powered by coal-fired boilers and conventional cylinders and coupling rods underneath to push the thing forward. But to harness the power of electricity without any overhead wires, that must have felt the epitome of modernity. But it wasn't just the feeling of being modern. It would have been quieter than the steam-hauled traction passengers were used to, not to mention cleaner, smoother. And when the engine revs up and the traction motor kicks in, the acceleration would have felt sharp. That's not surprising, as the wooden-bodied vehicle weighs only around 35 tonnes. That's not much more than a British Railway Mark I passenger carriage. Today, the auto car is sharing the rails with the other trains working at the Great Central's last hurrah gala. It's warm inside, but that's not the only reason pulling people to this piece of railway history. It's travelling to a special destination. The vehicle's survival is remarkable. Having enjoyed a working life around Tyneside and Scarborough, it was later given a new, more powerful petrol engine, which could not only move itself, but a trailer car too. However, it was withdrawn by the London and North Eastern Railway in 1931, and the body became a holiday home near Kirby Moorside. Rescued decades later, it was all that survived. The body was taken to the MC and Bolton Abbey Railway for restoration. Meanwhile, at the Great Central Railway, a new diesel power unit was combined with a reinforced chassis from a Great Northern Railway milk and brake van, dating from the 1920s. Uh, so this is the driving cab. So over here we've got the handbrake. Uh, dropping down we've got the power handle, direction, the brake valve. Uh, and on the desk here, we've got all the various gauges for speed and brakes, uh, as well as the engine shutdown, bell, bar, uh, bell buzzer, guard communication, and the fire alarm test button. A lot of modern features here. A lot of stuff to come off other vehicles, other locomotives. Uh, so some bits might look familiar to drivers who sign things like 08s. Uh, that's very familiar on a, a class 08 shunter. Uh, and uh, the seat is most probably from a HST power car. And so, to the unusual destination. The autocar first visited the Great Central in January 2020, and later that year it was due to cover these very tracks and run towards Mount Sorrel. The pandemic intervened, so this train is nearly four years late. The branch line was only ever used for bringing stone to the Great Central from a local quarry. If it had been a passenger line, perhaps something similar to the auto car would have been the motive power. At only 10 miles an hour, the vehicle makes light work of the tight curves and steep grades 
to arrive at the Mount Sorrel Heritage Centre with a full trainload of passengers. A long abandoned train running over long abandoned tracks from main line to branch line to a new heritage centre. A fine tribute to every volunteer who has ever believed the impossible just needs a little work. <laughs>